I tried to make a scene chart online, but it wouldn't have enough. Mm. I think it's space gray, so it's like useless. Pretty light. Uh, easy to make. She's trying to get me. Um, probably whenever Dr. Cherry gets back from his little expedition map. There, there's like a couple of things that still need to be graded, like end to end, but like it's, it's like ready to go, so it'll be really soon. It's like ready to be released, he just has to make two or three changes to like a couple of things I have, so that makes sense. I think they were a lot better this time, but that makes me feel better. I feel like the grades were like a lot better overall. So, if that gives you confidence. I had some really good answers. <laughs> I got ten ten. <laughs> yeah, I think we could go whenever it's done. So like a button over there maybe? Yeah. Uh, I if that's like a useful does this one work? Yeah. This one does. I'll just shout it. Yeah. As much as I get. <clears throat> Good morning. Can you all hear me okay? All right. Uh, my name is Blake Lytle. I'm uh, going to be a guest speaker today in your class for Dr. Terry. I'm here from the Clemson Center for Geospatial Technologies. And you all need to learn how to make a story map for your report. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to introduce you quickly to ArcGIS Online, which is a, a browser-based GIS software, and show you how to set up a story map. And this is going to be the way you'll communicate the results of your report. Um, if you need assistance uh, after today, um, our offices are on the fourth floor of Cooper Library in 412, which is behind the circulation area. And I will also give you instructions for how to contact us through our website. The tutorial we'll go through today will be on a web page. I'll send you the link, and I'm also going to record it to YouTube so you can review it after the class. We have a lot to cover and not a lot of time to do it. Um, if you need to see something again or have a question as we go, uh, feel free to ask me. <clears throat> but 
So what we're going to do today is, like I said, use ArcGIS Online. So this is a geographic information system software. So this is a software that performs mapping and analysis of geospatial data or data that is tied to the earth somehow. Um, it runs from a browser. There's nothing to install. You all have access to the service using your Clemson username and password. Uh, this ArcGIS Online enables you to create a story map and a story map is really a website a template for a website that you're going to fill in with all sorts of information, whether it's text, videos, images, uh, other websites, and most fundamentally maps that you'll create. And so these are a really cool communication tool. There's no programming required. They're a lot like Adobe Spark if you've ever used that uh, before. So um, what really sets them apart is that the, your project has some sort of geographic component to it. Um, so just quickly, some examples of story maps. You can go to storymaps.arcgis.com. It has a full gallery that gives thousands of examples of these things across a variety of different disciplines and topics. Um, I'll just highlight a couple of those right now. We're going to create a story map similar to this format today. This is called a story map journal. This particular one is talking about um, anthropogenic changes to the earth or the way humans have affected the environment. So you see this website has what's called a main stage here at the center where it's going to feature either a, an image or a map or a video or something. And then this side panel, which houses your narrative text. And you can also embed images, video, or even other websites into that side panel. Here along the right hand side, you see all of these different uh, stops. So you essentially create a sequence of these pages where each stop has some main stage content and then side panel content. And through creating the series of stops, you can construct a narrative. So think of taking a regular report with an introduction, methods, conclusion, and different sections, and then converting that into this type of format. And that's what you should be thinking about for your semester projects here. So this particular story map is linking all these different interactive maps that show how humans have affected the earth. What we will do today is very briefly make a story map talking about sea level rise. And it will have an interactive map here showing sea level rise, focusing on the Charleston, South Carolina area. So we'll see how to add uh, images, possibly video if we have time to that side panel. Um, this is an example of a story map uh, a student made last fall in a physics class using the same story map journal. So they've combined YouTube videos, these high resolution images. They've created their own interactive maps about uh, honey production. And then here at the end, they also, this is very important, list all of their sources. So as you use information out there, you want to be able to cite your sources. And this is a great example of how to do that in the story map journal. So does that sound good? All right, so what we want to do to start is open up a browser and go to this website, arcgis.com, arcgis.com. I'll tell you that Google Chrome works best. Uh, Firefox occasionally has issues. Safari works OK if you're a Mac person. But if you have the option of Chrome, I would recommend that. So we'll open up our browser here, go to arcgis.com. Here in the upper right corner is a sign in page. So to sign in, we'll click on that. And you're going to click here at the bottom where it says sign in with your enterprise login. Next, we just need to type in our organization URL. This one's easy to remember. Just type Clemson in the box. And then click on Continue. And then once again, click where it says Sign in using Clemson University. And I've already signed in once today. It should take you to the Clemson standard sign on page where you'll enter your username and password. So by show of hands, how many are logged in now and see what I see? Just about everybody. Awesome. So this is the ArcGIS landing page. 
Uh, here along the top are different tabs that will take you different places. First, let's click where it says content. So if you've never logged in before, you won't see any items here. I've made lots of stuff in ArcGIS Online. This is essentially where all of your stuff is stored. So any maps you create or data sets you, you add will be saved here. To get started using a map, we want to click here at the top where it says map. And then this is going to open the mapping interface. It'll show you uh, the lower 48 United States here. You can interact with this map. You can zoom in and out using uh, a mouse wheel if you have one handy, or there are these buttons, the plus or minus signs here that will zoom you in and out. You can click and drag to change the extent of the map. And then by clicking the home button, that will zoom you back in on the lower 48 United States. Along the left-hand side of the page, it should show you uh, the section called About. If you click here on Content, this will show you the table of contents for a map. And so a GIS works by adding layers into a map. So as you add data, they get drawn one on top of another here. This first uh, fundamental uh, data set you see is called a base map, and the default is called the topographic base map. So as you zoom in, what you'll see is it highlights topographic features, things like forested areas, waterways, and so on. You can change that base map by clicking here at the top to see a base map gallery. So similar to, to Google Maps, you could choose an imagery layer using satellite and aerial photography, but there's also lots of other options. We have a streets base map, good for displaying uh, transportation data. You could show the dark and light gray canvas options. These are great when you use very colorful data that contrast very nicely. There is an oceans base map, which shows you uh, the structure and topography of the oceans. The open street map is actually an open source user uh, created database of map information. So you can customize the appearance of your map just by changing the base map. So I'm going to go back to the topographic, which is the default, and then click here on the house icon to go back to this extent. Everybody with me? All right. So our map is a little boring right now. Let's see how we add data to it. So your projects are going to be on a variety of different themes. I'm going to show you how to add data from a couple of sources today that you can use in your projects. The first one is we'll add data from all ArcGIS Online users. So anybody who uh, has an account can submit and publish their own data and make it available to anybody else. To add data, we click here in the upper left corner on this yellow Add button. And then we have a few options. We want to search for layers, so I'll click Again, add in the upper left corner and then search for layers. So here I'm presented with a few more options. In that find bar, this is where you would type keywords for the type of data you're trying to find. Underneath that, it says in, with the default being my organization. So this is currently only showing data from other people at Clemson. If we uh, go to our drop down menu here, Let's select the option ArcGIS Online. So this would be all ArcGIS Online users. And for our keywords, let's take a look at a wind and weather. So I'll just type the words wind and weather in the box and then click go. And so I get a variety of resulting data sets, thousands and thousands of them. I'm looking for this one called current when, wind and weather conditions, which is the fifth or sixth one down my list. If I click this add button, the data set gets added to the map. So this one has a symbology of arrows. It's showing current wind and weather, uh, really actually showing readings from weather stations all over the earth. Um, when you have added data to the map, you can click here in the lower left corner where it says done adding layers, and that will make that menu go away. So now here in my content panel, I see that base map topographic, and I see this new layer of current wind and weather conditions. 
by checking and unchecking that box, I can turn that layer on and off. So I can hide it or add it back to the map. In the upper left corner, if I click next to the word content on legend, it will show me the legend for that map. So now I can interpret all of these different arrows and understand what's being shown to me. So I see these are showing me wind speed and direction. And now if I click on any of these arrows, I get this little pop-up box that gives me more information about that particular weather station. So such as its name, its sky conditions, and its visibility. I'm gonna switch back to my content tab. And then notice there's this arrow next to the name current wind and weather conditions. If I click that, I see there's actually two data sets within this single layer, one called stations and one called buoys. And if I uncheck that box for stations, I see that I have readings from weather buoys in the ocean or in the Great Lakes and also terrestrial weather stations. And if I hover my mouse over that word stations, that name turns blue and I see lots of other uh, icons show up. For instance, this one called show table. If we click that, it's going to open what's called an attribute table. And this is all of the data associated with every one of these points. So for each point on this map, for every arrow, we have the station name, we have sky conditions, temperature, humidity, pressure, all sorts of information. And when I click on one of these points, that pop-up window is just giving me a summary of data from the attribute table. Does that make sense? So spatial data fundamentally has a geographic component and what shows up on the map and attribute data that gets stored in something like a, an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm gonna close this attribute table here, close my pop-up window. If I wanna remove data from a map, I would hover my mouse over the layer here in the contents, and then I see these three dots. These are the more options. If I click that, I'll then click on remove, and it will remove that layer from the map. So I'll say, yes, remove the layer. All right, so we saw how to add data from ArcGIS Online, another really cool place to find data for your projects. If we click this Add button in the upper left corner, and now select this Browse Living Atlas Layers. So the Living Atlas is a series of high-quality curated data sets provided by Esri, the company who makes this software, and it comes in a variety of categories. So if you're looking for data for your projects to put into a map, this is a really great resource. If you expand where it says all categories, you can see that they have different imagery, especially temporal imagery, so you can see changes over time. If you're interested in income or demographic data uh, or poverty information that's here, there's lots of landscape data sets, elevation, uh, agriculture, biology, soils, geographic information. We have information about urban systems or transportation, so there's thousands and thousands of data sets. We don't have time to go through them. <clears throat> but if we want to search for an example of one, I'll search here in the upper right corner where it's in the box, precipitation. I type precipitation. I get four pages of results. I'm going to click well, here on my second option where it says National Weather Service precipitation. If I click on this, it gets added to my map. I can start to see it show up there in the background. So now if I click close, I'll close this box and view the result. So what we just added was the precipitation forecast data for the next 72 hours. This data set has time uh, associated with it. So if you notice, there's now a slider at the bottom of the screen. And if I click the play button, it's going to show you in six hour intervals, the forecast across the United States for the next three days. So how's the weather looking as we get towards the weekend? Any rain on the way? I think we look all right. <clears throat> so any questions right now? Okay, let's remove this data set, just like we did the other one. I'm going to hover my mouse over here in the contents Click those three dots for more options. And then I'm going to remove it from the map and click yes, remove layer. 
So what we're going to do is um, add some sea level rise data to the map, and then we're going to save it. So here we'll click add in the upper left corner. To We're going to search for layers. We'll look in ArcGIS online if it's not already selected, and I'm going to search for sea level rise. And I'm looking for this layer. It's near the bottom of my list here. Three foot sea level rise. The username is SLR underscore NOAA or sea level rise from NOAA. And then I'll click add. And now I see this data set outlining the edges of the United States. If you want to learn more about a particular data set before you add it to the map, you can click its name over here in the search results. So if I click on that name, three foot sea level rise, it gives me a quick summary of it. So this is three foot sea level rise inundation. And if I click here on item details, it will open up a new tab. And that will give me information about the spatial extent and resolution of our data, what all the different colors mean in the legend, who's created it, and so on. So this data set was created by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. It shows uh, areas that would be inundated by a three foot rise in sea level around the United States. So this is a great place to go to get more information if you need to cite the source of your data, which is really important. So I'll switch back to my map. I'll click done adding layers in the lower left hand corner. And let's say I want to focus on Charleston. How many of you are from the Charleston area? There's always a few, right? So we can type here in the upper right-hand corner, Charleston, South Carolina. There it is. And that will zoom right to that location. So here I have this layer that if I switch to my legend, it's like it's running a little slow. I see that areas of blue are showing areas of inundation. So from low up to high, a full three feet. And these green areas are uh, low lying areas that are not hydrologically connected to the ocean, but that could potentially flood in a storm. So you can zoom in around Charleston if you are from the area, see if your house would be flooded, for instance. I see a lot of the downtown area would potentially be underwater. So in my story map, I want to show downtown Charleston. So I'm going to zoom into that location and I'll switch my base map from topographic to imagery. Which I think makes a really cool looking map here. So this map is going to be incorporated into our story map. We need to save this map. So here at the top, we click save and then save again. And we need to give our map three things, a title, tags, which are keywords associated with it, and a short summary. So I'm going to call this sea level rise in Charleston. And I'm going to add the words by and my initials, B-A-L. In ArcGIS Online, you can only have one item with a particular name. So if we all try to save a map with the same name, it won't let you. So add your initials afterwards to make it unique. And tags, I'll call, I'll add the word sea level rise. Type that in the box and hit enter. And give it a summary. Map showing three foot sea level rise in Charleston, SC. And once you filled out that information, you can click on that save map button. Yep, so I've already saved a map with that name, probably from a different class, so I need to give it a unique name by Blake B2. So now that I've saved this map, I could close my browser window and come back to this at any time, and it will be saved in my account. So once you've saved your map, let's click on the home button here in the upper left-hand corner. 
and then click where it says content. So now you should see this map here in your content. I have a lot more items here, but right at the top is the sea level rise map. If I click on the name of that, it's going to take me to the item details, just like we saw for that data set. <clears throat> but now I can click in the upper right hand corner where it says open in map viewer, and that will take me back into the editor for this particular map. And so I'll click on open in map viewer and come back to where I was just a minute ago. All right, everybody there? Doing good? We just did a, a lightning speed introduction to GIS. So now we're going to take this and turn it into a story map. So the first thing I'll do is uh, click the share button here at the top of the screen. So by default, when you add or create an item in ArcGIS Online, only you can see it. You can share items with different users. If uh, Go ahead and check the box where it says everyone or public. So this is going to make this map available for anyone in the world to see. You can also uncheck everyone and restrict it to people with Clemson University credentials. Somebody would have to log into ArcGIS Online to see your map. Or if you uncheck all of these, it stays private. Only you can see it. But we want to make these public. So I'm going to check the box where it says everyone. And notice there's a URL here where it says link to this map. If you were to open or paste that into a new tab, you could view your map without changing it. But what we're going to do is click on this button that says create a web app. So ArcGIS Online has thousands and thousands of different applications that have all sorts of functionality. Um, and we can create those out of our web maps. So a story map is just one example of a web application. And so we're going to create that story map journal. So what I'll do is type the word journal up here at the top. And what we're looking for is here on the second page. So I navigate to my second page of results, and there's this item called the story map journal right here. So I'll click on that, and now I want to create the web app. So I'm gonna go back a few steps just to show. So from my web map, I click the share button here at the top. I made it public, and then I clicked here where it says create a web app, and I searched for the journal which is on the second page of results, the story map journal right here. So by show of hands, who's with me? Pretty much everyone, all right. So I'll select this and click on create web app. So again, we need to give it a title, we need to give tags and a summary for our story map. And so I'm going to call this sea level rise story map by Blake. The tags I'll just leave as sea level rise and I'll add a summary and just add the word story map. And then click on done at the bottom. So this is going to take me into the story map journal builder. Once you're at this point, just click on the start button. And what it's going to do is show you those layout elements. Oh, getting ahead of myself. We need to give a title to our story map journal. That title will show up at the top left corner. And so I'll call this sea level rise story map. <laughs> Once I've entered my title, I'll click this arrow. <laughs> And then it's going to show me the main stage and the side panel. And then it opens up a box where you add content to your main stage and then to your side panel. So our first section is our home section. So this is what the a visitor to your story map sees right away. So for this story map, this was our home section. For this story map, this is our home section. 
What you generally want to do is find a, a, an attention grabbing high resolution photo to use as your main stage content. So here under my uh, story map journal builder, step one main stage content, we're going to select an image. And you can upload an image directly, link to Flickr, Google, or give it a link, a URL. So we're going to provide a link. We're just going to quickly use Google image search. So I'm gonna open a new tab here in my browser. Go to Google, I'm going to just type climate change and go to images. And I'm just going to pick one of these images that looks appealing to me. We'll just go quickly, I'll pick this third one right here. And so then what I wanna do is right click that image and I wanna select copy image address. So we need the URL directly to that image. So it should end with a .jpg, .png, .gif, or some other image format. So I'll once again pick my image here in Google, right click it and select copy image address. I'll go back to my map journal builder here, to my main stage content, click on link, and then I'll paste that URL. And so now I see it ends with the .jpg, that's fine. So then I'll select next. And here I add side panel content. So this is where you would say I have an introduction to your story map. So this story map shows sea level rise in Charleston, SC. Then I'll click on add. And now I have my image for my main stage and I have a bit of text here on the side panel. If I wanna edit and go back and change either the main stage or the side panel, I do so by clicking this pencil icon here along the center of the screen. So we can go back, we can add more text if we want. We can also add uh, images, video, or embed websites directly into uh, the side panel. So by clicking this camera icon here, we can insert media. So we have a similar dialog box like we saw before. We can insert an image, a video, or a web page. So what I'm going to do is uh, insert an image, go to a link, go back to Google, and I'm just gonna quickly grab the URL to another image. So I'll click on another picture, right click it, and copy that image address. Go back to my story map journal builder, paste that URL and click apply, and then save. Maybe I need a few spaces here between the two. So next let's add a new section. We wanna show that map we created just a few minutes ago. So here in the bottom left corner is the button for add a section. So if we click here, we need to give it a title. And so I'll call this section <coughs> Charleston. My content is going to be a map. So I can leave that dialog selected. Here where it says map, I'll click my drop down and choose that map I created just a few minutes ago. Sea level rise in Charleston by Blake. And you can customize some of the appearance and behavior of that map. For instance, I wanna show a legend. So I want users to be able to see that legend to help interpret what I'm showing in the map. So I'll check the box here where it, next to the word legend. And you can also check the box for an overview map that will have a small inset map showing you the location in the world. So then I'll click next. And then I can set up my side panel content. And again, type some text. So sea levels are predicted to rise as a consequence of climate change and increasing temperatures. I'd also wanna make sure that I had a good source for that. So you can 
choose an appropriate citation format and include the source for your information, whether it's, say, a number or uh, the author and the year. So source and the year 2018. Then I can click add to create that section. And here's my map, right? So a user would be able to zoom in and out completely. There's an overview map they can use to zoom to different locations. And there's also a legend that they can expand in the upper right hand corner to learn more information about your map. So next I'm gonna click save here in the upper right hand corner. So I'll save all the progress I've made. Questions at this point, anyone? How much time do I have? I have time to show you a couple more examples of ways to put content into your story map. So you can embed uh, images, you can embed videos, you can also embed entire web pages into the side panel or the main stage. So I'll open a new tab, and I'm just going to search for NASA quiz climate change. And NASA has lots of interactive quizzes for people on a variety of different topics. <clears throat> So for instance, this warm up quiz here, about halfway down the page, just quizzes people's knowledge about warming of the earth. So I'm going to copy the URL to this page, this NASA, climate.nasa.gov slash quizzes slash whatever. So I'll highlight and copy that URL and go back to my story map. And I'm going to edit, click that pencil icon here to go to my side panel content. And I'll click that camera icon where it says insert an image, video, or web page. And then I'll select the web page option and paste that link. And then from there, I'll click on configure. And I'll, I'm going to specify the position or the size information. So here on the right, it says custom. I'm going to click that and enter the height of 700 pixels. And then I'll click on apply. And then on save. So now I have a fully interactive website here within the side panel of my story map. So a user could take the quiz <clears throat> as part of my part of my story map, part of my narrative here. Sure. Um, so I went to Google and I searched for NASA quizzes on climate change. I went to the first result and I clicked on that warm up quiz so that I had the URL here. And then I copied that, went back to my story map to the editor, click that pencil icon. And here in the side panel, I click the camera icon to insert an image, video, or a web page. And then I selected a web page and then pasted that URL, clicked on configure, and I specified the height. So I click where it says custom, and then type 700 for the height. And then clicked apply. And then save, all right. So now I have these two stops for my story map. <clears throat> Again, you could think of translating a written report into this format. So every stop could be a subsection or, or a, um, sorry, a section or even a subsection of your report. I'll also show you how to customize the layout and the color template and a few other things. So here at the top left corner are the settings. So the first things we could change are the layout. We could have a side panel or we could have a floating panel. So I'll select floating panel and then click apply. And what happens now is rather than being docked to one side of the screen, my side panel floats along the middle. 
If I go back to my settings here in the upper left corner, we could change the side of the screen, the side panel will show up on, whether it's the left or the right, and then also change the width of that side panel. So if I wanted to make it very small and then click apply, that really pulls the focus of the visitor, the viewer, onto the main stage. So now my map really fills the page here. If I go back to my settings, we can change the theme. The floating panel really only has two options. If I switch to a side panel and go back to a theme, there's a few different color palettes you can choose from. You can also specify the fonts that are used as well as the header. So um, if you wanted to include a customized logo in the upper corner of your story map, you could do so. The default is an Esri logo. Let's see, this one here on this page, if you wanted to use, say, a Clemson Paw or another logo, you can specify that URL here. You can also change the tagline, which are these words right here. The default is a story map. So we, we're going to change that and say a story map by with your name. <clears throat> and then you can have that link to a particular website. So let's say you wanted to show off your work um, you could put that to your LinkedIn or your Twitter or Facebook or your own uh, website of your choosing. You can have direct links for people to share your story map on Facebook, on Twitter, or the URL. And so I'll leave all of those uh, selected. I'll click apply and then save the setting. So. Just like on our web map, we had this share icon here at the top. If I click on that, what it will show me is this URL. <clears throat> so I could change the sharing settings. I could make it private or only viewable to me, viewable to people at Clemson or public. And I have this URL, which I can copy and then paste into a new browser tab and view my live story map. And because I'm still logged in, there's this edit icon here at the top. But this is the way my story map would appear to anybody else on the internet. So from here, I'll close my settings. And that's it. So any questions? Right, so when I created, the question was about how did I add this map um, to the main stage? So when I created the section, so when I clicked add section, my main stage content is going to be a map, image, video, or a web page. So for our first, our homepage, we selected an image. For the second stop, we added a map. So you can add any map that you've saved to your content. For instance, the CO2 emissions by country I'll just quickly show that. Add some text to my side panel. And now that's how you would add a map. So when we created this section, and you can go back and change that at any time just by clicking that pencil icon, going to the main stage here, we could change it to an image, video, or web page. Any other questions? How do we remove stuff we don't want? Sure. So I'll go back to my Charleston page. Let's say I wanted to remove that quiz if I didn't like it. So I would click this pencil icon to modify either my main stage or my side panel. And there's another pencil icon here where I can click and change the media. Or if I select it and hit backspace, I can just delete it right away. Any others? Okay, so what I will do after today is I'm going to send you a link to the Geospatial Center instructional page. It's going to have the step-by-step -step directions we went through today, plus a little more since we didn't have enough time. And I will also email you a link 
to the YouTube video with a recording of we went through that you can go back and, uh, and review. So again, you can stop by at the Geospatial Center in Cooper Library on the fourth floor. Um, you can also contact us via our website, clemsongis.org. Thanks for your time. Um, I'll come look in just a second.